my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you like sewing content and sustainable fashion, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I wanted to start the video by apologizing because I know I haven't posted in a while, but I have a few very exciting updates that has made my life slightly chaotic, so I haven't really had time to sew. My partner and I bought a house recently, so if you want an empty house tour, let me know. And I also booked a workshop for a new musical that's being developed, so I've been in rehearsals all day for the last few weeks. But I have a very special video for you today. I recently reached my 100,000 subscriber milestone, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made my celebratory 100K dress. I am also so excited to announce that today's video is sponsored by a thrifty notion. They are a secondhand fabric store and I've bought from them several times before and I'm just so happy with this partnership because their mission truly aligns with mine. I'm also doing a fun little giveaway so keep watching and let's get started. When I was coming up with the plan for this 100k dress, I envisioned something really dreamy and flowy and my idea was to have the dress covered in what looked like 100,000 flowers. I was looking online for some inspiration and came across this Zimmerman dress and it was just love at first sight. It is so beautiful and definitely my aesthetic. To celebrate reaching 100,000 subscribers on my channel, I'm going to recreate this dress and I could not be happier to partner with a thrifty notion to make this dress a reality. As you all know, I always try to create sustainably and a thrifty notion is hands down my favorite resource for secondhand fabric. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later and make sure you keep watching because I'm also going to be doing my very first giveaway in this video. Back to the dress. A thrifty notion has a beautiful selection of fabric and I ended up choosing 10 yards of this ivory organza as well as this fabric that I'll be using as lining that is pretty lightweight. I wanted to quickly mention that the lining was originally a pretty stark white and I wanted something a little bit warmer, so I ended up using this writ dye in the color sandstone. To create this light color, I used a lot more water and only a little bit of dye. I'm going to start by constructing the bodice and as you can see here, the Zimmerman dress is cut straight across the chest and this kind of cut is not the most flattering on my body type, so I went ahead and drafted my own pattern because I wanted my bodice to have a little bit more of a corset feel. Here are all of my bodice pieces cut out of the lining fabric. I've ironed on fusible interfacing on all of these pieces to add a little bit of structure since this fabric is pretty lightweight. Starting with this middle piece, I layer two pieces of organza fabric that I've already cut to size. I'll sew these pieces together around the edges and I'll repeat this with all of my other pattern pieces. Here are all of my bodice pieces, each pinned to two layers of organza and ready to be sewn together. I'm using my presser foot as a guide along the lining layer and I'm just sewing a straight stitch along the edge, pivoting when I reach a corner, working my way around, sewing all three layers together. I was just very rudely reminded that organza snags so easily, so I went ahead and switched out the needle on my machine to one of these Microtex needles. Here is a close-up of what the layers look like sewn together and I also went ahead and trimmed off any excess organza. Here are all of my bodice pieces with the organza layers sewn on and the next step is to sew these pieces together and you should have something that looks like this. This will now be my bodice shell. Here is what the wrong side looks like and I've also gone ahead and pressed all of the seams nice and flat. Next, I'm going to make my boning channels. I'm using bias tape and I'm placing it along this seam, making sure it is centered. Then I'll sew along both sides of the bias tape, creating a channel. This is what it should look like sewn on. I'll repeat this step with all of the other seams and this is what it should look like with all of the boning channels sewn on. Here is a close-up of the two rows of stitching. You can see here that they are evenly spaced along the seam and here is what the wrong side looks like. Next step is to sew on the zipper and I'll start by sewing my center back seam together with a basting stitch. This line indicates my center back seam and I've left a pretty large seam allowance of about an inch and a half. I'll sew my center back seam together making sure I use the longest stitch length on my machine. This is what the center back seam looks like sewn together and pressed. Next up is the zipper and I'm placing it along the center back seam, making sure that it is right sides down. I'm going to sew along both sides of the zipper tape, making sure that it's centered along the seam. I typically use invisible zippers when I'm sewing, but I was a little nervous that the fabric would be too thick since I'm working with so many layers, so I decided to go with a regular zipper instead for this project. I've gone ahead and removed the basting stitch for the center back seam and this is what the zipper should look like sewn on. Here is a close-up of the zipper and I wanted to show you that I also tucked in the tape at the top of the zipper. Using the same pattern and repeating the steps from before, I made the bodice lining using the lining fabric. Again, I used iron-on interfacing to add a little bit of structure and I also sewed on this ribbon on both side seams and this will be used to hang up the dress when it's complete. 
Now I'm placing my shell onto my lining right sides facing and I'll pin all along the top. Here you can see both layers pinned together and I'll sew them together along the top from where the zipper tape is sewn in on either end. Here is what the shell and lining look like sewn together and turned to the right side. I've also gone ahead and clipped notches in the seam allowance and pressed along the top for a neat finish. This is what the inside should look like. You can see here that the lining is not yet sewn to the zipper and I folded the seam allowance neatly underneath. Next step is to insert the boning. I'm using stainless steel boning and I have an in-depth tutorial on exactly how I prep my boning. I learned a really awesome hack that involves a heat gun so I will make sure to link that tutorial down below. This is what the bodice should look like at this point. The bodice is now done and before I move on to the skirt, I wanted to quickly talk about a thrifty notion. They are a second-hand fabric store that sells dead stock, de-stash, and vintage fabrics to help decrease demand for synthetic fabric production, reduce textile waste, and to promote shopping secondhand first. Every Friday, a thrifty notion drops a curated collection of their best quality secondhand fabrics, so make sure you follow them on Instagram at a thrifty notion and subscribe to their newsletter. Now it's time for the giveaway! Since this is a 100k celebration video, you all have the chance to enter and win a $100 gift card to a thrifty notion. To enter for a chance to win, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel, follow me and a thrifty notion on Instagram at littletoe and at a thrifty notion, and lastly, make sure to leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle. I'll make sure to leave all of this information in the description box as well as the last day to enter. And once this giveaway is closed, I will announce the winner on Instagram. In addition to this giveaway, you can also use the code LITTLETOE for 15% off your purchase at a thrifty notion. Back to the dress, since I'm using pretty large pieces of fabric to create the skirt, I'm going to draw out my plan so it's a little easier to see. Starting with the front skirt panel, I'll cut out a piece that measures 55 inches by 39 inches. For the back, I'll cut out a piece that measures 30 inches by 39 inches and then cut out another piece with the same measurements. These two panels will be sewn together along the center back seam. I've never really worked with these types of slippery fabrics before and it is almost impossible to cut a straight line and I learned something new today and I realize it's a lot easier to just rip it and I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. I'm starting with the lining fabric and I've already marked the measurement I need. I make a little snip at that mark and then just rip the fabric all the way to the other side. Here's a little ASMR for you. Here are my two back pieces cut out from my lining fabric and I've gone ahead and sewn them together along the center back, leaving the top section open for the zipper. Before I sew this to my front skirt piece, I place my pocket piece making sure that it is right sides facing. Sew together and you should have something that looks like this. I've already sewn the pocket to my front skirt piece and now I'm laying both pieces right sides facing. I'll sew along the side seam, around the pocket, and down the rest of the side seam. This is what it should look like sewn together and turned to the right side and here is what the pocket opening should look like. I also repeated all of these steps for the other side. Next, I'll sew a basting stitch all the way around the top to make the gathers. I'll also hem the bottom by folding over twice and sewing and then give everything a good press. Moving on to the organza layers. Just like the lining, I ripped all of the pieces I needed using the same measurements as before. I followed the same steps to make my organza skirt layer, again leaving an opening along the top of the center back seam for the zipper. This time, instead of sewing on pockets to the side seam, I left an opening the same size and placement as the pocket opening on the lining layer. Since organza is see-through, I also took the time to finish all of the seam allowances so that I wouldn't have any exposed raw edges. Finally, I hemmed the organza layer using a rolled hem. I've gone ahead and made the second organza layer for my skirt and I'm just thinking about how the editing is going to make it seem like I made all of these skirt pieces in like under three minutes, but this took forever. Um, organza is so difficult to work with and I definitely felt very defeated many times. This took me hours and I have so much respect for people who work with organza and these kinds of materials because I felt really, really defeated, but my skirt pieces are done, so let's put them together. Here are the three layers for my skirt and I'm actually going to gather them individually and then sew them together before sewing it onto the bodice. Here are all three layers gathered to match the waist of my bodice, pinned together and ready to be sewn. 
I'm sewing my skirt pieces together right now and I just wanted to quickly mention that to try to make things a little bit more manageable, I decided to do this in stages. So I sewed my lining to one layer of organza first and now I'm sewing on my second layer of organza. Here are the three layers sewn together and this will now be the shell skirt piece. This is a little difficult to see but the zipper is only going to be sewn to the lining layer so the edges of the organza layer lines up with the lining when the seam allowance is folded under. So to clarify, only the lining layer has a seam allowance. Moving on, I've gone ahead and pinned this to the bodice shell layer. You can see here that the bodice lining is not yet attached to anything and I'll go ahead and sew the two shell pieces together. Here is what the dress should look like at this point with just the shell layers sewn together. This is what the inside looks like and you can see here that the shell layers are sewn together along the waist. Next is to sew on the rest of the zipper and like I mentioned earlier, I'll only be sewing this to the lining layer and not the organza layers. As you can see here, the organza layers are left unsewn and the zipper is only attached to the lining layer of the shell. Next step is to sew the skirt lining to the bodice lining. For the skirt lining, I'm making a tiered skirt so I'll start by cutting out a smaller piece that measures 60 inches by 16 inches. Then I'll cut out a larger piece that measures 120 inches by 20 inches. I'll gather this piece to make the top tier of my skirt lining and then gather this larger piece to create the second tier. The reason I've decided to go with a tiered skirt for the lining is because I don't have a large enough piece of fabric to make a full length lining skirt. And by making a tiered skirt, I can reduce some bulk in the waist area, but still have a fuller skirt around the bottom. Here is the smaller piece cut and sewn together along the center back seam. Again, I've left the top section open for the zipper. Since I don't have to add pockets to the lining, this piece does not have any side seams. Next, I'll sew a basting stitch along the top to create the gathers. I've gathered the skirt to match the waist of the lining and it is pinned together right sides facing. Sew together and this is what it should look like now. Here is a better look at what the lining looks like so far. You can see here that the lining is still not yet attached to the zipper and that it is much shorter than the actual dress. Next is to sew on the second tier. Tiny little hiccup. I don't have enough of the lining fabric to make the second tier, but thankfully I found this in my stash and it is a little bit shinier than the other fabric, but it is pretty similar in color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this, even though I am a tiny bit bothered that it's not the same fabric, but this will be hidden under all of the other layers and you won't be able to see it anyway. So I'm going to just use this. Following the measurements from earlier, I've gone ahead and made the second tier and gathered the top as well as hemmed the bottom. Next, I'll pin and sew this to the hem of the shorter lining layer of the dress. This is what the finished lining should look like and I'm just so glad that it's not too noticeable that I had to use a different fabric for the second tier. Last step is to hand sew the lining layer to the rest of the zipper for a nice clean finish. This is what it looks like sewn on and you all already know how happy it makes me to see the inside of the dress just as neat as the outside. Besides the flowers that I'm going to sew on a little later, this dress is basically done and I'm so excited to show you all what it looks like on. This dress isn't even finished yet and I already love it so much. At this point, I was just so excited to see what it would look like with all of the flowers. Just in case anyone was wondering why I didn't make Daisy a matching dress, it is because she is currently living the cone life and is taking a little break from modeling. She is totally fine. She just has a little rash that she keeps scratching, so she has to keep the cone on, but I didn't want you all to think that I forgot about her. Moving on to the flowers, I dyed the leftover organza and then I made a ton of these flowers and I'm going to make a separate video on exactly how I made these, but for now I'm just going to hand sew all of these flowers onto the dress. I made about 300 flowers in various sizes and I ended up using this instead of hand sewing since the organza is so delicate. I apologize for the awful lighting, but I was limited to only working on this dress at night due to my rehearsal schedule. Following the instructions, I used a little bit of fabric glue to adhere each flower to the dress. I worked in sections and used a paper bag between the layers of organza to prevent them from accidentally sticking to each other. I let the glue cure for 24 hours and here is the completed dress. My favorite part of this dress is that it just makes me feel so happy and I can't help but smile when I wear it. I decided not to add any flowers to the bodice, but I'm thinking of maybe adding some removable straps. I think the flowers on the skirt are so playful and just perfect for spring. And of course, we can't forget about these pockets. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is definitely one of my more challenging makes, but I absolutely love this dress and I feel so beautiful in it. So I hope you all like it too. A huge thank you to A Thrifty Notion for sponsoring this video. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Little Toe and at A Thrifty Notion for a chance to enter the giveaway. If you liked this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this dress. And as always, thank you so much for watching.